Twitter. Right. So now what we do is we wait. Now it goes out on Twitter. And you can even cut, you do your thing. I can always come. You can come over to me or something. Right. Here's now we have one user, and what you should be able to see is. <laughs> Now, now these are the, all the people who are joining. This is so so cool. say your name. Hi, I'm Kate Ekman. And Kate is joining us from uh, our studios in New York. We actually were doing an interview with her at CBSN, but we didn't feel like we got enough time. So we're continuing our discussion. So say a little bit about yourself, Kate. Hey guys, how are you? I'm Kate Ekman. I'm a Wilhelmina Curve model. I've been in the business several years, and I also work in TV and I used to actually work with one of Contessa's co-workers, Jamie Yukis. So we're all here. We're having a good time. Yeah. Contessa's amazing. I don't, didn't want to leave her. So I'm, I'm sitting next to her. I'm, tr I'm, I'm trying to um, click on my link right now about Periscope TV. I am TV single. So that we Hello. See. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, do you. I don't know if you want to tell all your people on Periscope. Oh, amazing. I yeah. didn't want to oh look. Her, oh, wait, wait. So this I'm is going to be so meta. I got to turn this off. So okay. All right. So. <laughs> Um, here's the thing. You, we were talking about the fact that Sports Illustrated is putting its um, swimsuit issue out, and for the first time, it's using a big girl as one of its models. By the way, do you know Ashley? Have you ever worked yes. with her? You've been on a yep. shoot with her? Okay. Yep. So first of all, are you like, what's your reaction to her being named as a swimsuit model? Well, I'm I'm so happy for her because I think it's great to show diversity and mainstream media at any time, whether it's race or ethnicity. Or, or, or body diversity. I think it's great. I think it's a huge step in the right direction. However, I think we need to still be even more inclusive and include some um, women in, in between sizes. We have like zero and two up to a 16. So let's see our, our size sixes, our size eights. Okay, and so I wanna give, so let me give you an example of yeah. what we're talking about right here. Okay, uh, first of all, I'm trying to touch my computer screen like it's a touch screen. Okay, Ashley Graham, right? This is her swimsuit picture. And what was your reaction when you saw this picture? I think it's great. I, it's something that we certainly have never seen in Sports Illustrated before. I mean, we're, it's it's really uncharted territory because last year we had Robin Lolly, who she's at my same agency, and she's a, has a, a much different figure and a much different body type. So I think, you know, so many people are applauding this and they're so excited about it. And then I, I've seen a lot of other comments, you know, people can be really harsh online, but other comments saying like, Okay, she's beautiful, she's great, she doesn't belong in the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. Oh, so. thick, thick. I've been called thick before. He's, he's saying in thick. the black community, we use the word thick, not big. Yes. And I've been called thick. But, you know, like, whatever. The, the thing is, is that it's true. There's all kinds of body types. And to some degree, you're born with the body that you have. But you can work, and you can work out, and you can watch what you eat, and you can be healthy. And so one of the things that I found was, um, and I think we talked about this a little bit on uh, CBSN, but my friends who are plus size models say, the problem was when I really intended to get healthy, I lost weight. What happens if you're a plus size model who loses weight? Well, I was, uh, was a I still am a plus size model, but I, I lost a good uh, 15 pounds at one point and lost my three main clients because they said, you look too thin, you look too fit. And they really, they want something that's more substantial because then people complain that, hey, you're not big enough. We want to see something bigger. So that's hurtful to me too. It's great to support all sizes, but then, they say that you're not big enough, so it's you're always you're too big. Mr. Stamp says he's described me as thick before, and I've seen those comments. But I took you know whatever I I, I didn't take I. I didn't take it as a compliment necessarily. I thought it was just a description. I think the moral of the story for me is you have to value yourself for something other than what you look like. And as women, so much pressure and importance is placed on our physical appearance. So for me personally, I. Thank God I have something to offer besides whether you think I'm pretty or not, but thank God I have something to offer besides what I look like. I, okay. Yeah. So here's, <laughs> so here's something interesting. We have a friend in common. Her name is Danica and she's a plus size model. And she, I, I met her kind of on the fly and she was telling me about modeling. Here's one of her modeling pictures from her plus size days. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me turn this around. Uh, okay. Okay. This is Danica as a plus size model. Then she said, look, I realized that I wasn't really healthy and I wanted to, um, you know, get in shape. So she, she goes and she gets, starts losing jobs. Like when you're a plus size model and you show up and you're not really plus size. And I've been told they start padding hips. Yeah, 
and breasts and you know they try to put you in clothes that are big and padded out so you look bigger and especially if you're trying to sell clothes to plus size women you kind of have to be plus size so that women can see what the clothes look like on you. Yeah, and, and that's the women then they the women who are size 18, size 20, then they they feel insulted that that clients and designers are putting someone like me who's you know a size 10 and as a plus size model. They say you're too thin, you're too fit. So it, the debate is it's just it's not going away. You're always going to be too something for somebody. So yeah, but the so the weird thing is it, Danica says to me, so when I have a friend and she's willing to babysit for you and she's a plus size model and so she does modeling, I was like, well, she could babysit for you. I'm like, okay. She comes to my door. Now, you know, I have twins at home, little baby boy twins. And, and the theory is among married women that you shouldn't hire a nanny who's too good looking or too hot because, you know, they're going to be at home with blah, blah, blah. The, here's who walks in, the plus size model who, who walks into my house. Oh my Are you God, mine. Samantha and she's great with kids and immediately my little boys um, go and climb through her hair look like a plus-size model yeah. she's my size yeah. and she said the same thing to me I'm not big enough anymore to be a plus-size model and I'm too big to be a normal model now here's my question if you're Sports Illustrated and you're trying to appeal to all kinds of men why where are the women who are a normal size 6 size 8 they're neither plus size nor skinny minis. Uh, thank you. Well, Sports Illustrated, I hope you're here. Can you please hire Contessa so yeah. we can see a lot more diversity in the magazine yeah. and everywhere else for that matter. Where are size six, eight babes? And by the way, and I was getting ready to crack a joke about, oh, oh no, you don't want to see this old. But you know what? <laughs> in the, in a, one of the ads that is running in Sports Illustrated in the swimsuit issue, there's also an ad a woman who is, the, in, it's included with um, a, an age. And she's 56. Yeah, well, yep, hold on a second. Is. Let me sc scroll up here. Hold on one second. And I better find another battery source, apparently. This woman right here. What do you guys think? I mean, I think she's really beautiful and stunning. You said you didn't like the swimsuit, though, right? I don't, I don't, I don't think these swimsuits are the most flattering for any of these but really for any body type but I feel like they could have done a little better with the swimsuit they chose for such a huge momentous ad and such a pivotal time here so can I tell you something this is so interesting that um, when you're looking at these women apparently my producer who was doing the segment for me went around and was asking people who they found sexy and Kate um, I mean Ashley was getting a lot of attention. Everybody thinks she's beautiful. Um, Kwa was getting a, a lot of attention. People think she's beautiful. When they asked about the woman who's older, sexy was not a use that was being attractive, whatever. My friends um, who are older women, women who are postmenopausal, that something happens. Like when you go through menopause, that men stop looking at women. And for women who have gone through their 20s and 30s, accustomed to that, it's jarring, it's shocking, and it's demeaning when you're no longer sexy. Like, the, uh, like if you're used to that, okay, wait, but I, here. I, I've got two words Tell, for you. He says it's not true. Uh, Tell me. Two words for you. Yeah. Christy Brinkley. Hello. Have you seen Christy Brinkley? But she doesn't look like she's 56. She looks like she's 35. But what I'm saying is... Women, women who, who look visibly like look older. Yeah, like if you look at 56. Okay, but but tell okay tell me tell me older women like is there a cutoff date where women when they start looking that age when they're no not really sexy anymore where they're attractive or beautiful but not really sexy. My mother is 72 and I she is still stunningly gorgeous and but sexy. If she puts on a, a cute dress, she can be sexy. Yeah, but my mother keeps up with her looks. She doesn't get plastic surgery but she is you know she colors her hair she exercises every day she looks amazing and you know what it is there's so much more than just again I have met some gorgeous women working as a model but their attitudes made them not so cute and then there's women who you don't look at them as like wow she's hot but then you hang out with them and you're like this woman is beautiful do, so you have to bring out that inner glow and suddenly it's like do you, you think are that, sexy do you think that I mean I think in television the camera can tell who you really are. Yes. If you spend enough time in front of the camera, you can't really hide your inner self. Yeah. But what about in print? Can you hide your inner self in print? You can to an extent, but also just when you, you, because the eyes, the eyes don't lie, like, mm, you can just. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but when you you project, because that's what modeling is, it isn't just, you're not taking a picture like this, you are projecting so much energy. So the more confident, the happier you are, the better you feel about yourself. And that's what, say what you will about Ashley Graham, whether you love it or you hate it, think she belongs or doesn't belong in this magazine, Amen and God bless Ashley Graham because that woman is size 16 and serving it and is confident and doesn't give a hoot what you say about her body. Listen, modeling is always seen as a really competitive field, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's going to be more opportunity in the near future for women who are not plus size and who aren't sticks but or, or super athletic? I mean, super athletic bodies are beautiful too, but man, they take a lot of work. What about people who work out a normal amount, yeah. eat a normal amount, live a healthy life. What about normal people? Is there gonna be a space for them in the future, do you think? I certainly hope so, and I think so. I think we're going back to to that thing where we're, they're gonna try different things. And if you look at brands like like Chico's and Talbot's, they'll go with a, a now they will use some older models too, because it's their customer, but they will have more of kind of that four, six, more of a healthy size. A, a client I worked for, Christopher and Banks, they use more of that size six. They want just someone that, if you went out to dinner tonight, someone you'd kind of see in the restaurant that, it's not so glamorous, isn't so skinny, and isn't so big. Someone that's just, you know, like your your friend that you don't really think much of, of oh, her body. It's just, you know. That's me. I like, I might have a future in modeling. Uh, that is you. Well, we're, we're getting, first of all, you're gonna, we got to get you a job at Sports Illustrated. You're going to be the model booker there. <laughs> and then you're going to be on the cover eating your french fries. Contessa's my new favorite person. As soon as we wrapped our interview, she was eating french fries on set. Well, wait, wait, wait. My... <laughs> This is so ridiculous. Like, I'm just being outed now. Literally, we're talking about plus size models. And when we're done with the interview, uh, my uh, hair and makeup guy extraordinaire, Armando Toro, brought, brought in this. Can you guys see this? I mean, how could you not eat these french fries? But you do notice that there was a full fit tray. And I've eaten a few. And I've shared a few around. I didn't eat the whole thing. See, and you have a future, too, with the, these real women campaigns. This is a real woman right here. I've been sitting next to her for about an hour. I'm entertained. I don't have to watch TV. I just sit and hang out with Contessa. <laughs> She's talking about horrible subjects, and I'm thoroughly entertained. Have we exhausted the whole plus-size model conversation? I know. Look, I'm going off to other things. Now I'm yeah. having my Contessa moment. We're, yeah. Now I'm pimping you out as a model. Wait, but you said you're, that maybe this is not your entire future for a long time, huh? No, I, I'm, I'm interested in other things. And my passion, the, the thing that modeling has done for me that that, um, I'm happy to share, but modeling brings out, at least for me, it brought out all of my insecurities, things that I didn't even think I was insecure about. And I see this as a gift because I've been able to heal these things. And then I want to, um, you know, talk to other people about them and people that a lot of people don't feel good about themselves. And we all have issues. And I really do want to talk to people, men and women, um, about things to make everybody feel better and to talk about things that you don't feel good about yourself so then that you can heal it and then move forward and get on with our lives and that's why there's like the breakdown of so many relationships and so many things happening in the world people have bad relationships with themselves we're so hard and critical of ourselves we just need to lighten up it's the the, the movement of the self-love the plus size moment we're having in Sports Illustrated but uh, taking care of ourselves and, and liking ourselves is uh, about to have a, a big moment at least in my life and the people that I'm involved with well, anyway, thank you guys for joining in the Periscope conversation here. I just, you know, I felt like we we had a few minutes together on CBSM, but I wanted to explore it a little bit more. So thank you, yeah, Kate, for coming thank on you. with me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. All right. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Now i got to figure out how to stop.